West Virginia American Water has been serving the Mountain State since 1886. As the steward of water service to roughly one third of all West Virginians, we take our responsibility of providing quality water very, very seriously. It's our number one priority in every decision we make. On January 9th, 2014, a chemical spill into the Elk River in Charleston presented in arguably the largest emergency response effort in our company's history. On this day, an undetermined amount of chemical known as MCHM leaked from an above ground storage tank at a facility owned by Freedom Industries located about a mile and a half above our Kanawha Valley water treatment plant. I first learned of the Freedom Industry spill from the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection just before noon on January 9th. After checking the plant to see if there were any signs that the water quality was being affected, I immediately drove to the Freedom Industry site to find out more about the type and amount of the chemical that was spilled. Based on the information provided, I instructed the plant operator to enhance our treatment process by adding powder activated carbon. All afternoon on January 9th, we were diligently monitoring the water in all stages of the water treatment process, giving our awareness of the spill. The Canal Valley plant is a multi-year, award-winning plant under the Partnership for Safe Water equipped with advanced water treatment materials including granular activated carbon and powdered activated carbon. We first determined that the chemical was getting past the filters when we began detecting the chemical's distinct licorice smell in the filtered water a little after 4 p.m. We immediately consulted with state health officials and began gathering more information. At that point, we involved the Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management and the Governor's Office. We collectively made the decision to issue the Do Not Use order, which was immediately followed by an emergency press conference at 6 p.m. The order was directed to close to 100,000 customers, or approximately 300,000 people, in parts of nine counties. I've been asked time and time again, why didn't you just shut the plant down? If we'd shut the plant down on January 9th, given the circumstances of the plant running at near full capacity to keep up with demand from the sub-zero temperatures we'd have experienced earlier in the week, the result would have been a loss of the entire distribution system, meaning no water available for any purpose. As a water utility, we are responsible for providing water for far more than drinking. The communities we serve depend on it for firefighting. They depend on it for sanitation. Imagine a 3,000 square mile area with 300,000 people and no water in the pipes anywhere. How would hospitals, schools, and businesses be able to operate with no working sprinkler systems and no way to flush their toilets? And it would not have been just a short dry spell due to the extent and complexity of our 1,900 mile pipeline distribution system that includes more than 100 water storage tanks, we conservatively believe it would have taken more than a month to start the plant back up, disinfect, replenish, and repressurize the entire Kanawha Valley system under even the most optimal conditions. Our recovery efforts from the Freedom Industry spill were a team effort from our experienced employees multiplied by members of West Virginia National Guard Civil Support Team. Within the first 24 hours after the Do Not Use order was in place, a joint command center was established here at the Canal Valley Treatment Plant. The interagency response team that was quickly formed included the West Virginia National Guard, the West Virginia Bureau for Public Health, the Department of Environmental Protection, emergency response agencies, and scientists advising for the state. Overnight and into the next day, scientists worked to develop a way to test for MCHM and measured in water, because at the time of the spill, no method existed. About that same time, state health officials received guidance from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control that a maximum level of one part per million of the chemical MCHM would be protective of public health. Once laboratories and procedures were in place, we initiated a broad effort to test the water at points throughout the system to make sure all MCHM levels were below that threshold before we lifted the do not use order. As part of the interagency team, I was responsible for the flushing and sampling crews. National Guardsmen performed all the chain of custody functions from collecting samples to posting testing results. This allowed our employees to do what they were trained to do, which was operating fire hydrants and performing systematic flushing from the water treatment plant out to the far ends of the distribution system. 
We began lifting the do not use order in a systematic way based upon pressure zones throughout the system. Once samples from a pressure zone were confirmed to be under the health protective level, we lifted the do not use order and gave customers in that zone the all clear to flush their plumbing. We worked to develop an interactive GIS based map within 48 hours. This map was key to informing customers when their zone was lifted and received more than 2 million visits during the time it was live on the web. Throughout this response, we did our best to make sure our customers received the most accurate and timely information we could provide. We made it a priority to communicate with our customers, public officials, and the media. We held press conferences, issued dozens of press releases, used automated phone calls, provided updates on our website and social media, and made sure that our 24-7 call center had the most up-to-date information. At the call center, we made changes to prioritize all West Virginia calls, which resulted in an average answer speed of 18 seconds for Kanawha Valley customers. A local hotline was created and staffed 24-7 for days by 20 workers in the Charleston office to answer specific questions regarding zone lifting status. When the Do Not Use was issued, we immediately deployed 14 water tankers and six tractor trailer loads of bottled water. We ultimately purchased 35 tractor trailer loads, which equals to more than 130,000 one-gallon jugs, and we made this available to our customers for seven weeks following the spill. All water distribution was coordinated through the West Virginia National Guard for deployment, and we were proud that we could mobilize our resources immediately to provide water while state and FEMA resources arrived, as well as long beyond the date the state discontinued its water distribution. Once all sample points were confirmed below the health protective screening level, we moved on to phase two of the flushing and testing to get down to the level of non-detect throughout the distribution system. Several days after the CDC set the initial screening level of one part per million, they issued follow-up guidance for pregnant women to consider an alternative water source until the chemical was at non-detectable levels throughout the system. Our goal then became for all samples to be non-detect at 10 parts per billion, which was 100 times below the screening level. To put this in perspective, 10 parts per billion is equivalent to 30 seconds in 100 years or a nickel in $5 million. 12 days after the initial spill, Freedom Industries disclosed that a second chemical called PPH was leaked along with MCHM during the January 9th spill. Our laboratory partners immediately began developing a method to measure PPH in water samples taken both before and after the do not use ban was lifted. And the CDC later issued guidance that confirmed that the levels detected in historical samples were well below the level they considered to be protective of public health. Our employees worked around the clock through one of the harshest, coldest winters I've experienced. We continued to flush and sample and made the announcement six weeks after the initial spill that all water samples throughout the distribution system were non-detect at 10 parts per billion. However, this chemical had a very persistent odor and we were committed to our customers that we would still address the remaining odor issues. As long as the odor was still present for certain customers, we knew that their concerns would continue. Throughout the event, we received hundreds of water quality calls. To address the sheer call volume and respond to each customer individually, 40 water quality employees from other American Water subsidiaries joined our six water quality employees in West Virginia to handle this task. In mid to late February, more than 30 employees from American Water subsidiaries in Kentucky, Pennsylvania, Indiana, and Illinois worked tirelessly with our employees to flush approximately 2,000 dead-end water mains in the system. Crews from other states also performed additional leak survey work, necessitated by the extreme cold and its effects on our pipes. In the Kanawha Valley system alone, we fixed more than 500 main breaks in 10 weeks. On February 20th, we announced that all water samples were below the 10 part per billion screening level set for pregnant women. By February 25th, all water samples were below 2 parts per billion, and we concluded our systematic flushing. We realized that conflicting information was provided by various sources at times, and inaccurate and sometimes misinformation perpetuated feelings of fear and distrust in the community. Throughout this response, we did our best to make sure that our customers received the most accurate and timely information we could provide. 
As a regulated water utility, we follow all regulations and guidance provided by agencies like the CDC and the EPA. We can't make these determinations ourselves, so we work closely with the State Bureau for Public Health to reinforce the information that they provided. The health and safety of our customers has always been and will continue to be our number one priority. That commitment will never change. We share our customers' frustration over the impact the Freedom Industry spill has had on our community. Although we did not cause this issue, we committed substantial resources to address customers' concerns and enhance their confidence in the water supply. We followed through on our commitment to replace the nearly 1 million pounds of granular activated carbon in our Kanaw Valley Water Treatment Plant's 16 filters. We provided credits on customers' bills to account for the extra water they used to flush their homes and businesses. We are very engaged in the ongoing dialogue with our regulators, public officials, and our customers regarding water system resiliency and redundancy. We continue to emphasize with state lawmakers and legislators that those who handle, store, and transport chemicals must have systems to prevent such spills and to keep water companies and public health officials informed about the nature of the chemicals they are storing, their safe procedures, and their plans for mitigating spills. Regulators must be empowered and provided with the resources necessary to assure that materials that are unwanted in the public water source are handled appropriately to maintain the integrity of that public water system. Our state is not only blessed with good people, but also with skilled emergency responders. We were proud to work alongside them as part of the interagency emergency response team. The West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources, West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection, local and state emergency management agencies, and many other organizations demonstrated their expertise, persistence, and compassion throughout this event. We owe particular gratitude to the monumental efforts of the National Guard civil support teams from West Virginia, Virginia, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Ohio, and Washington, D.C. They perform skillfully and tirelessly together with our employees as water was flushed and sampled throughout the system. Restoring full water service and full confidence in our water is not just our job. It's our promise to our neighbors and our families in the communities we serve. After all, this community is our home too. Today, our customers can be confident that their water is truly the great quality they've come to expect from West Virginia American Water.